Hey guys, Helen Hartsmith here again from the Heart of the Witches Path YouTube channel. Hope you're having a good day. I totally am. Well, guys, I'm hanging my head in shame. I have a confession to make. I've been holding out on you. I didn't mean it. it just kind of happened. Here's the deal. I was organizing some files, putting some stuff away uh, for the channel, and wouldn't you know I found a video that I hadn't posted. Crap! I hate it when that happens. I hate it when they slip through my fingers and I don't get them posted and share with you guys. Oh, it's a really good one, too. It's a book review. Yeah. So, you're going to get it now. Yay! <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's the video that you're going to watch now. Well, after I'm done apologizing. Uh, sorry that it got lost. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoy it. I hope you dig it. I love doing book reviews. Uh, and I really, really loved this book. So I'm like really bummed that you haven't seen it yet. So uh, I'm going to shut up and let's get to it. All right. Enjoy. Hey guys, Helen Hartsmith here again from the Heart of the Witch's Path YouTube channel. Hope you're having a good day. I totally am. Book review time! Holy cow! Uh, I'm here to talk about this book, The Witch's Book of Self-Care, Magical Ways to Pamper, Soothe, and Care for Your Body and Spirit. This is by Erin Murphy Hiscock. Uh, this is another one of those just cute little books. I mean, they're just so cute. This is a nice hardcover book. Um, here is what the back looks like. This book came out at the tail end of last year. I saw it, so that's like the uh, the tail end of 2018. I saw this book and I was I saw it a couple of times and I'm like, ooh, ooh. But I was like, the you know, Yule's coming up. I didn't want to purchase it uh, for myself. I put it on my list and things like that. And I can't remember if I ended up buying it before. I purchased it, though. Um, maybe I waited until after the holiday. Uh, but I knew that this was something that I really wanted to get into the, and, and see what what Aaron had to say. So this book is right around 216 pages. This guy is chock full of like some really amazing information. I have to tell you that I really did enjoy it. There wasn't, um, there wasn't any ground shattering information contained in this book. However, for me, sometimes the best information is information that you revisit, if you get what I'm, what I'm saying here. You know, I think we as, as people tend to know how to take care of ourselves. We just don't always put ourselves first, and that can be a problem. And so... It's, it's lovely, and here's what I'm saying. It's lovely to sit down and have a cup of, oh, a cup of tea, and perhaps chat with someone. Hmm, that's lovely. But when we have busy lives filled with lots of things that need to get done, sometimes having that cup of tea and sitting down and having a chat with someone just can't happen because I have 10 other things that must be done before the end of the day. However, in a book like this, it's great to read. Perhaps you'd like to take 10 or 15 minutes and make a cup of tea and just sit down and relax and enjoy it. And so for me, I like to be reminded of those things that I knew because it's like, a oh, it's like having that aha moment all over again, okay? So I really enjoyed the way that Erin, I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly and that it is a her. Gosh, Erin is a third degree Wiccan priestess in the Black Forest clan and the author of The Green Witch and Power... Spellcraft for Life. So hopefully I'm saying Aaron right. A-R-I-N. 
Anyhow, how Erin put this book together, I so, so, so enjoyed because the chapters are broken down into different places where we might need care. For instance, the first chapter is all about self-care and magic. And so in that chapter, she talks about journaling techniques and mindfulness and and having a sacred space that we can go to you know for five minutes to be you know to decompress in a day it, it was great it was it that was nice it was nice to have those things oh yeah take five minutes and journal something about your day you know and and, and that is a part of our self-care that we don't think about Chapter two is all about mental and emotional self-care. So it's about identifying your self-care goals, using affirmation work, which I love the idea of and forget to do it for myself. Um, this book also has lots of small rituals and things like that. So a five, a daily five minute self-care routine to start the day. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Um, she talks about authenticity um, for our mental and emotional self-care. That, I think, is important. There's journaling exercises throughout. Spells to battle stress. So spells, another, excuse me, really nice thing that's included within this book. Chapter 3 is all about physical self-care. So in that chapter, um, we might... Let me, I'm trying to bounce there. <laughs> Bear with me while I bounce, bounce, bounce. Um, so taking care of our physical bodies and what stress does to our physical bodies. The importance of hydration. Um, I love this. Making a magical water bottle spell. So cool. Um, exercise, rest your eyes. She talks about nutrition and she actually includes some recipes that are like what a lot of us consider comfort foods. So some of us might already have recipes, but if you're not like a great cook, there's a, a pot or a roasted vegetable soup recipe that I kind of want to try. There's a leek and potato soup. I've made leek and potato soup for a number of years and I love it. And it was so cool to see that there was a recipe for that in this book. Um, there's also Parmesan croutons, if you're so inclined. There's bread recipes, which I kind of think it would be really interesting to, I've never made a, like a like a yeast risen bread. I've made, you know, like banana bread and things like that, but I've never done like a basic white bread. And there's a recipe in here. And I think that that would be awesome to do it with like a magical intent. Because when you think about it, the act of making bread has all of the elements in it. You of course have earth that um, that is the seed and the it grows in the earth, um, but then when you um, oh I was thinking about this earlier. Am I going to be able to remember it? You use air and water as part of the mixing of the bread dough and allowing it to rise with the yeast, right? And then of course you use fire when you bake the bread and then spirit is embodied in that act of completion and so I'm like that would be that there's magic that is just oozing out of bread and I like bread I mean maybe I should try to make some so I liked that there's a pot roast recipe there's baked macaroni and cheese just some of those comfort foods rosemary potatoes oh my gosh I can't tell you how many times that my coven has rosemary potatoes at feast I mean just totally um, and then she also talks about teas and how you can use it for health beneficial reasons and bath and shower care oh my gosh there's tons of really cool recipes in here to make like 
scrub bars for the shower, um, an exfoliating scrub, um, a vanilla cookie sugar scrub. So there's all kinds. There's bath bomb recipes and things like that. And I want to say it might come later. There's tea recipes in here too. There's also bath oils. So that's all in that physical self-care. And then the the fourth chapter is all about spiritual self-care. And so in that chapter, I should have marked them so that I could go through them faster. Sorry. Um, she talks about um, an animal invocation and honoring ritual. She talks about the gods and how they can help you in your self-care, in your spiritual self-care. Um, and how animals, how you can work with them. Um, she talks about offerings. I don't think that we necessarily talk enough about offerings when it comes to our spirit guides and our patron deities and things like that. And that can, that act alone can be a bit of self care that you take the five minutes to offer up some kind of an offering to your to your patron deities to the animal spirits that you might work with to the stone or plant spirits you know that that is very much being in tune with you and your guides and your relationship um, she also talks about spirit boards and how that can be an act of self-care Daily rituals, like a daily kickoff ritual, which I loved, and, and, and an end-of-day ritual. Um, prayer. I know that a lot of times as pagans, we don't talk about prayer because that definitely has a Christian connotation. But I don't think that prayer should be something that we're, um, you know, I think maybe we use other words to not use prayer. And I'm like, why? It is what it is. Um, meditation, such an important act of spiritual self-care. And so easy to do, too, quite honestly. There's lots of incense and tea recipes in here for meditation. And then the last chapter is all about household self-care. So if you've got a healthy household, then that will help you in your personal self-care. And so there's, uh, talk, she talks about uh, music, she talks about uh, cleansing, she talks about um, creating a comfortable space to live in, elemental balancing, um, purifying and cleansing. I mean, just, they're, they're, the recipes alone in this book make it completely worthwhile. And I I, honestly, I am so grateful that I picked this up because like I said, there's nothing, there wasn't anything that was like, oh my gosh, I never thought about it. But reading something like this is definitely a way of reminding yourself of tools that you already have in your toolbox. And so for that alone, I think it's worth five brooms because this is something that I'm going to keep and I'm going to keep it on my bookshelf and I'm going to say there were, you know, there was a tea recipe in here that there was a bread recipe in here that I want to use. And there's, um, you know, you can definitely take this kind of stuff and you can either photocopy the pages and put it into your book of life or your book of shadows or book of light or whatever you call your grimoire, or you can type it in there or what have you. This is so good. I so enjoyed this book. Highly, highly, highly recommend it for any level of um, of person, whether you're a beginner or you've been practicing for 20 years. There is something in here that you will say, I knew that. Or maybe, or I wondered how to do that. And there's going to be something in here for you. I'm actually so inspired by this that I'm going to use this as a, um, a stepping point for a class that I will teach somewhere soon. I don't know. Um, so if you're interested in more information about this, um, I will definitely put a link in the description box to buy it on Amazon. And so, um, but of course, I always suggest 
that uh, you shop local, um, support your your local small business and purchase it there if you can at all. And um, if you do purchase through Amazon um, and you don't have a a charity that you would like to use on your smile, definitely look at or think about doing the um, Temple of Witchcraft. They have a smile account. So there's a, I don't remember what the percentage is, but every purchase, there is a percentage of the purchase price um, gets kicked back to them. So, okay. So the Witch's Book of Self-Care by Aaron Murphy Hiscock, Five Brooms. Definitely check it out. Um, I highly recommend it. That's going to be it for this video. If you liked it or learned something from it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> and um, lots of links in the description box for social media and things like that. So check it out. Um, you can also email me at heartofthewitchespath at yahoo.com. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, definitely uh, hit me up with those. And so that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to walk the path for a little while with me. Until next time, blessed be.